our meeting now and etu mō te karakia. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai. E hi a ki ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, ti hei mauri ora. So no mai, um, ki tine hui, welcome to this meeting this afternoon, um, the Strategy and Policy Committee uh, meeting to hear the hearings. Um, please note that uh, the meeting this afternoon is being live streamed and let myself or a um, democracy advisor know if you'll be leaving the meeting um, at any time. Um, so I'm just going to call for apologies. I do have an apology which I don't need to put forward because um, Councillor Wolf is actually here, um, but uh, one for uh, Mayor Foster for lateness, and then Count, uh, Deputy Mayor Free um, will possibly have to leave early, so we're just going to put it in anyway. We may finish before, but um, put that forward. So do I have a seconder for those apologies? Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. Um, I now put the motion which has been moved and seconded. Uh, those, um, so you can vote now, except I can't, hold on. not quite open yet. And I'll just check um, that um, both councillors are happy. Put your hand up if you're okay to accept the absences, uh, the apologies. Councillor Wolf, you okay with that? Is he frozen? I can see, thank you, Councillor Matthews. You, yep, cool. <laughs> you just froze there for a few seconds. Okay, and it looks like Councillor Foon, if you want to do some voting. Okay, that would be carried. Thank you. Um, I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest that they may have in relation to the items on the agenda. No, um, and con confirmation of minutes. I move the motion that the Strategy and Policy Committee approves the minutes of the Strategy and Policy Committee meeting held on the 18th of June 2020, having been circulated, and that they be taken as read and confirmed as an accurate record of that meeting. Do I have a seconder? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. <laughs> You're the only one waving at me today. Um, so we will now vote on that one, on the minutes. Councillor Panet, have you pressed your button? Uh, this is just the minutes. Have you pressed your button, Councillor Panet? <laughs> yep, votes have been counted. Cool. Thank you. That's been carried. Um, so there are no items not on the agenda. And this afternoon we have two, four, six, eight, nine um, people coming to submit. Um, we'll have one of them will be via Zoom. Um, and so under um, standing order 31.1, um, there's been no request for public participation, but we will be um, having these oral, oral hearings. So we've got um, we've got a few. I'm just looking at the checking the timing on here. But um, each of the submitters will have five minutes um, to, to present and um, we'll just suggest that you leave a little bit of time in your presentation if um, you want to have any questions from councillors. Um, and we will um, begin now with um, R. Chai Lim, who is R. Chai Lim here. Not yet. We might have to do, sometimes this happens, people aren't always here just at the time that their slot is because we're running very much on time. Um, but we'll see, is Celia Derby here? Celia, oh. would you like to come forward now and might just see Councillor Panic, can you help? Thank you, just with the microphone. Okay. Um, so welcome Celia, it's um, great that you've come in this afternoon to talk to us and um, I'm sure we'll have some questions. Thank you. So we've got a um, submission being handed out, thank you. Right, and so you can just see the timer up here that tells you how long you have. And one that you're in a, has your name on it. Okay. Thank you, Celia. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, we can. Um, thank you. Regarding fair rent, Wellington City Council, June 2020, Celia Darby's oral submission. I have greatly updated my oral submission. Five minutes. I love my flat, which is full of ballerinas, angels, and fairies. I definitely do. I definitely do not want to leave it. But it is a tiny bed sitter with no shower. Previously, my rent would only go up by three dollars fifty per week. In the under 20 years I've been in my flat. That was way too much. However, last year my rent went up by $15.50 per week. That is a massive amount. It is very unfair to be charged extra rent from having extra money in the bank. I have my mother's inheritance, but that is to last for the rest of my life. Wins said, Wins or Ministry of Social Development said a one off inheritance is not deemed as income, so I, still, I could still be entitled to the supported living payment. I look after my flat so well that I should be charged even less rent for keeping it so immaculate. Please never charge me more than $3.50 per week every year. I have also made gardens on the front and back terraces. Are there any questions? Thank you. You did a fantastic job telling us about your place. It sounds really lovely. Um, councillors, are there any questions? Thank you, Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you, Celia, for coming in. It's nice to see you again. I know you used to come to the um, council meetings. Yes. Um, so just under the um, proposed scheme, how much extra would you be required to be paying? Do you know? I have no idea, but I didn't even think about it. All right, okay. All right. Thank, um, thank you. Maybe we could um, find that out for ourselves just to give us an idea. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, yes. Thank you, Celia. Thank you. Um, Councillor Phone has a question. Celia, where is your flat? I'd love to tell you. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful place called Queen's Court Flat, Rick Street, Miramar. Right. There's only one terrible thing, and I've tried to get this done, and, and they just say they can't afford it. The, all the walls on the terraces are just peeling off so badly and, and rusting and um, staining and if they just say they can't afford it but it's, that every time it's left it's going to be getting worse and worse mm. and worse and I contacted Jazz Dyson and, Re and um, Rachel Tavita and several other people and they just say it won't go ahead because they can't afford it but everything else in Queen's Flat is top of the line. Right. How long have you been there for? I'm not sure since two... I, I am sure, but I can't count it. Uh, yeah. It's 2008. Okay. Then. Right. Thank you. It's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Do you any more questions? I think that's all the questions, Celia, and that um, was really good timing, and thank you. Um, it's wonderful to hear the pride that you have in your home, and it, it sounds like you've put a lot of effort into it. So thank you for coming to talk to us about it. Well, look, it's and a pleasure, and I just so greatly appreciate what the City Council do for all over Wellington. Mm, thank you. It's really amazing. Thank you, and we appreciate you sharing your perspective And I've this. also made friends here, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Celia. Thanks, Thanks Celia. Thank you. Um, so I've just heard that um, our child um, will be um, coming soon, but I'm wondering if Demesa Ahmed is here. Bernard, would you be willing to come forward now? It's a little bit earlier than you were meant to be presenting, but I know that you're familiar with coming to do this, so hopefully that's okay. Thank you very much, Bernard, for coming in today to talk to us about this. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, councillors. Um, now I've got 10 minutes but I don't propose to take um, all of that um, because some such thank you yeah yes thank you um, I have 10 minutes but I don't propose to talk to all of it but we'll see how we go there's a couple of things I'd like to cover 
Um, I'm just noting Councillor Wolf's tie that I'm very envious of because it's uh, rainbow colours, so quite choice there, Councillor. Um, now, uh, I have um, a few things I want to get through in terms of what I've submitted, and you will have that online, and you will know that I've been certainly um, sending you some emails with um, quite, quite a raft of information, but I want to narrow it down to a couple of things. Um, this, uh, presently, I, I certainly want to take up a whole 10 minutes, but um, as of late yesterday afternoon, um, a principal advisor for housing, that's Mr Paul Davies, contacted me by email in terms of a range of issues I'd raised, particularly pertaining to getting data under the Official Information Act, and that letter is now advising me that what they'll do is uh, come and have a meeting with myself and, and another tenant who are very concerned about issues pertaining to Fife Lane, but also some general ones as well. So that's why I'm changing my s submission situation just a bit this afternoon talking to you. But I still want to cover a, name, a number of points. Um, I want to look at uh, your policy in terms of, well, my base point, which I've said in my submission anyway, is number one is I'm in favour of the new policy, and the new policy is quite a substantial change to what uh, tenants have been working under and, and uh, being used to. Uh, um, now, so I'm in favour of it, but I've got some reservations, and that's what I'm flagging for you, and also um, for, as I'm in discussions with a number of people across the, the, the tenant complexes. Um, can I want to look at, because I thought we could do some of these ones quick, I want to look at the issue of, uh, in the proposed policy, you're talking about a rent freeze for 80-year-olds. And what the policy hasn't stated and what um, I haven't been able to find out or get any, any council officers to confirm for me is, OK, we've already got a number of over 80-year-olds in the flats. What happens to them now? And uh, my, uh, where I am in the complex of um, <coughs> Fife Lane is 16 units and we've got an 82 year old, an 86 year old <coughs> and my neighbour is turning 90 next week. So my neighbour next week, 90, <coughs> has had a rent freeze for um, 10 years. He's been in the flats for 20 years, 22 years. Lovely chap. Um, misses your CBD library immensely because that's where he only ever went to. So let's please get it back. Anyway, <coughs> uh, so suddenly to say to him that, well, in terms of the new assessment, because he's just on super like me, his rent would be maybe $160 a week. But he's been paying like $112 a week for <coughs> for the last 10 years. And so there must be, and I've asked tenancy managers, and no one's been able to answer me this, you must be surely going to have, like, progressively bringing it in. So that as he's, as he's 90, well, you can say, well, we'll raise your rent a little bit the next few years, another couple of years later, we'll raise it next few years. Uh, you know, you could use the term um, grandparenting, like your grandparent, grandparent clauses, if there's been some in, immensely changed to it. Um, and so I think that should be taken on board and, and some explanation may be given by council officers. How are you going to do that? It's easy to say that I know that I'm talking to a number of people who are 78 and 79 and they're saying, well, you know, I'm coming up to get the rent, rent freeze. That's going to be great. And so I can say, well, no, hold on a minute. Look, changing the policy. So chatting to that group, but there's already that group that are over the 80-year-olds, and as of the after my submission, I don't think there's particularly many of them, but there is, there is, there must be a number, and they're in, in the units, and let's still just give them um, that opportunity of um, going on and working through it. So that's that point. Thank you. Number two, I've raised the issue um, also here um, in... Um, D, I've raised the issue about how many um, council employees do you have in um, council units, and I think that needs to discussion. Um, I know there is a number, but it needs to be looked at in, in terms of saying um, 
that's what I've called for in my official information at which I understand Mr Davies is then going to give me some information. I don't, I don't think there's hundreds, but I think there is a group. And one of the issues there is to say that, well, of course, some of the council employees may be low-paid ones, and I know, for instance, there's a couple of parking meter officers who are in social housing units, and you could have said, OK, they were low-paid. They have now been graciously, and also I'm agreeable to, having received the living wage for council, which is excellent, but that's taken them up a little bit of money. But then there's another group, I believe, that are in the council units who are council employees who are on higher pay. Now, the new rent philosophy is going to be applied to them, of course. But it does raise a, a bigger issue about, well, you're locking away some of your social housing units, which maybe should be available for general public purposes, as opposed to giving it to the advantage of a council employee. Can I tell you, I was at another meeting of where it was a mixed public meeting, but a mixture of some council officers and, and politicians. And for instance, one response was to say, well, maybe part of the social housing units are put away for council employees if they are essential workers. Now, that could make a bit of sense. And that might be the person who's um, clearly uh, the rubbish collector now c could be very much an essential worker because of what we've had with lockdown maybe the person who, who has some relationship for issues of road or emergencies turn out to, if there's a um, breakage in the water pipes or breakage in the sewage pipe, well that council employee if they turn out, and it, clearly they're an essential worker, um, and that would give justification to maybe being them in, in, in a um, council unit. But again, I've raised the issue of trying to find out, well, how many are there? what salary bound bands are they at and then does that fit in with what maybe is um, the application of the new policy. I'll tell you, um, in, in history I've just found some photos in the archives that some of the pictures that were um, of council units that I've tabled um, actually doesn't show a designation of some places in Daniel Street is being designated as staff council flats and those de that designation is well gone but it shows you that historically the council must have considered that we, yeah, we particularly need some council flats for council employees. I can quote you like when I was at 139 Daniel Street and there's a picture of that in the pictures I've supplied. 139 Daniel Street is a it's got 14 units there, and when I was there, we had two old bills, and one old, both of them were 90, they now passed away, bless them, but both of them were council employees, and one old bill had previously lived in Miramar all of his life in a three-bedroom home, raised the kids, and he was always there. He used to work for, um, we in uh, Lower Cuba Street had a thing called MED, which the council owned and ran. Uh, which is quite marvellous, which was still the same day, but it's gone. Anyway, Bill worked there in the accounts um, in the uh, um, municipal electricity department, <laughs> MED, and um, he raised his six kids uh, um, in a council unit over in um, Miramar, and he lived there all his life. And then in some later decades, the council come to him and said, well, look, you're here by yourself. Your kids are flying the coop and your wife died. Maybe it's time to move out. And he said, yeah, because he could see he didn't need the three-bedroom house anymore. So he came into a unit where I was up in 139 Daniel Street and finished out, um, went through his, his life uh, to, to the end. Very happy chap. So there was um, the point I'm making there, there was a changing issues of what some council employees had been in historically as to what is the situation today. I don't know what the situation today is and I think some of you might not know either and I'm taking the opportunity to saying well okay let's find out about it please council officers. Alright, I want to come to more of my issue about um, rent upgrades.
and I'm not going to get into that too much today because that's the thing I'm going to cover uh, further when I meet with council officers. It's coming to close time, but I, what I want to point out is um, I listened very intently to um, our woman, Tenet, who just um, chatted, uh, Cecilia, and I've seen her around and I know her. Now, that's indicative of the problems of what has been experienced by some of the tenants in the past, which underscores what I've been writing about. Um, by and large, uh, year after year, tenants received 2 or $3.50 rent increases, and of course then they substantially had got used to that. However, last, uh, last year's rental, because of the change of methodology and updating it, some people got that huge big increase. And that's therefore her being an example of many people um, had that huge horrendous increase now, in reality, the, the new policy that's now tabled for discussion um, is going to assist and help a lot of those people. I've, I am familiar with the woman's circumstances and for, for calculations I've done of similar-minded people, the rent increase will be uh, somewhat minor. I'm talking into the area of like 3 to $4 as opposed to what she experienced and other people experienced in the past of, of a huge just a huge jump pump. Okay, I see times. Yeah, there, so I'm sorry about that. Okay. It'd be lovely to have um, longer to listen yep. to your um, experiences because yep. obviously you do have a lot of experience and you've listened mm. and talked to a lot of people. But mm. it's good. I mean, you do know that you can email us and you've done that, so that's yes. very helpful. It gives us a good background. And thank you so much. Well, for what I'm today. suggesting that, given that I'm still meeting with senior council officers in the next couple of weeks, is to address further the main issue I had with my submission was about the issue associated with Fife Lane, but also the issue of how uh, non-upgraded flats were compared to graded flats. Now again, the new policy to some extent answers the um, those, those calculations that were really wrong. So the new policy answers it a bit, but it also brings in a, a fresh lot of situations. Here's the situation of the new policy says 52% of people will Gain well, that's great, but 48 percent of other people are there, are therefore. And I've been sitting with people doing calculations at Co22 and Newtown Park Flats, and suddenly, because of the income that they have, which might not necessarily be really high, does make their jump their rent jump up quite substantially. I might just have to stop you now because yes. yeah, okay. we need to move on to the next. But thank you very much, Bernard, for coming in and, and talking to us today. I really appreciate You're that. Well um, so well, I'd like to welcome now Archie Lim, who I think um, has arrived. I was told no. Oh, I know. Um, so uh, Demeza Ahmed has um, arrived now. So thank you. Um, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Um, so what we've got is a timer just up here. It tells you how long you've got. You've got five minutes to um, just talk with us. And if you want to allow a little bit of time, sometimes people stop at about four minutes just to allow councillors to ask you questions. No worries. That'd be great. But yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. Um, I migrated as a refugee. I'm going to read off my laptop. Um, I migrated here as a refugee to Aotearoa, New Zealand in 1998 from uh, Ethiopia with my family. I was a young lad at the time, only eight years of age. Um, we have since grown to love New Zealand and have made it our home away from home. I've created so many fond, mem fond memories here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which have shaped me and have allowed me to take every opportunity with both hands and instill in me that the sky is the limit and given your work ethic and determination, you can do anything. I am married now and soon to be a father, which is exciting. Um, we could not have pictured a better place to a uh, better country nor city to raise our child. I'm currently in my second year degree of social work at Fitri Polytechnic. So um, I understand the, the power in education and where it takes you in life as well. So as a refugee setting in New Zealand, um, Understanding the key ways of life was enjoyable as I viewed society um, 
and the world through an innocent lens and did not pay attention to other things that were going around me. I was a young lad at the time and all I thought about was just the next time I'll be playing with my friends and stuff like that and not understanding the other social issues which impacted me, uh, which may impact me later on within my life. Um, my parents have honored me, uh, honored me and my siblings by not allowing us to witness the struggles they have faced in raising us. Uh, a family of eight, you could imagine, is you know, busy, a um, lot of things to do, um, while supporting immediate families back home in Ethiopia who were pover poverty stricken and relied on their support. Um, it is this significant point I wish to point out to you to consider when you are setting the Fair rates policy for many refugees, their responsibilities extend to those still in difficulties in their homeland. These responsibilities are largely invisible but have a substantial impact on the ability of former refugees to establish personal savings or, sub, uh, or, or attain financial stability in a financial, in a financial climate that is forever changing. So the opportunity, even given the circumstance at the moment with COVID-19, you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs, but they pay their family back home to rely on them. Um, so the opportunity to have a reasonable rent and secure housing is key. Um, I understand immense financial pressure. Uh, under immense financial pressure and internal displacement, my parents managed to provide for us and support our relatives back home despite its sheer difficulty they pers persevered and managed to uh, manage a trying situation against the laws while it's integrating into a new society and dealing with internal separation as well as external ones to achieve such an outcome one needs to neglect the self the individual and embrace the clan and village mentality as as this was instilled in them growing up. You look after others and others will look after you. The refugee story in my view has never been understood for its entirety as the focal point has been fragmented and, and has never been viewed holistically. Let's, let's face it, no one wants to leave uh, their place if everything was fine there, you know. Um, uh, if you know that your family will never attain a, a, a life of dignity, then you, you'll be forced to leave that environment because you have no other choice. So, um, sorry, give me two seconds. Um, so the, the, the plight of the refugees as people who are, so peop, the refugees are seeing people who, who are burned to the system rather than uh, people who are who are of who who can be of asset to the system. You know, um, you know, I, I, given understanding that you had no opportunity back there, and you come in an environment where you have a lot of opportunities, you you will give you know 120 percent in order to provide for yourself and your family. Hence, why I am you know currently enrolled in study and understand that you know in order to to give the best opportunity for my kids and my and, and my future kids is to through educa education and taking this opportunity um the logic mind with reason and understanding of the true meaning of purpose of life such views never be okay sorry um refugees are resilient individuals who are mothers fathers daughters sisters brothers and aunties and uncles a family abroad that they must support. If we begin to see the person and take into account their individual circumstances, then we are able to achieve equality of care and support. In a sense that one is granted the means to lead a quality of life, the one glove is all approach is unfair and misleading and there is many fa facets to one's life. Studies Studies have shown that refugees and migrants commonly showcase a significant amount of resilience due to their capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and overcoming the most trying of, uh, of predicaments. For example, I hope to want... <clears throat> I hope to once I qualify as a social worker to be able to make a significant contribution to our Teiru New Zealand society for many years as well as support my family. I already am working full time as a mental health support worker in residential support living to provide for my family and I and here my family and I while studying full time. The reason for my yeah. So this is what I want to put to you guys, that the fact that um, there's a lot of um, 
other invisible responsibilities for refugees. Uh, it's not just the money that they earn here. It doesn't go into, uh, you know, their saving or within the society that they live in. There's other really um, demanding and difficult situations for them. Thank you so much for your perspective to us today. And we have unfortunately run out of time for questions, but actually it's really, it is really helpful to hear your experiences and your background. It, it helps us to see the big picture. But thank you so much for coming Wonderful. in today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Kia ora. Um, I'm just going to check his uh, Chai Lim here. No, she hasn't come in yet. Um, and so I'm just wondering if Will Walters, you're here. Thank you, Will, if you'd like to come forward. I think I've got 10 minutes. Yes, that is correct. I've got 10 minutes here for you. Oh. Thank you, Will. So, yeah, if, if you do, the timer is there. I know it's hard when you're presenting. It's hard to keep track of the time. Would you like me to give you... Well, would you like any warning sort of a minute before your time's up? Just that would so be great. Does that Thank help? I'm just much. sort of aware that it's hard for people to keep track of it while you're talking, so I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm a bit nervous. I was going to bring a support person, but I only had a couple of days' notice, and the person can get time off work, so, yeah. Just take your time. I'm going to try and be as positive as I can, but I'm also going to speak to the truth as I view it. Um, and it may be uncomfortable for some people, and I get that, but I think truth is important. And um, um, sit here and try and tell you everything you want to hear to protect myself, but I don't want to do that. Um, one thing I want to say, um, which I heard in a previous submission, and it's not for your benefit, um, in the block of flats I live in, there, um, I think there is a council worker. I've never actually asked him what he does. If you um, start precluding council workers from city housing, that's discrimination. You cannot do that. It's just not right. Um, I don't support that at all. Um, now, the consultation, I would say what consultation? Um, the first I knew about this was I received this in my letterbox two days before that, I don't know, a couple of days before, I can't say it was two, three or four days before that meeting was meant to take place. And of course, the lockdown happened. You will note there is, uh, it is only in English. There's no other information for any other tenants. And we have tenants in our block that um, don't necessarily read or understand English. Okay, it wasn't there. Interestingly, yesterday another notice came into our box about um, upgrades, which is new signage going up in the building, and everyone got one. I didn't. But interestingly enough, it had the information on one side. Um, I went and talked to a couple of neighbours and asked to look at theirs, and they all showed me, and I snapped it and but it had nothing of other language sorry it had all the other languages on the other side so I think it's interesting it's not on the consultation document also the, that meeting was to take place in Karori how was someone from um, on a low income meant to get from Karori, uh, Mount Victoria to Karori you know um, in the evening during rush hour traffic 5.15 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. How are they meant to do that? Nobody bothered taking that into account. Um, I've also noticed um, after I read that, I went and had, um, we, after the uh, lockdown, or just before it finished, we um, received these. And I went in and I had a look. I've been making notes. <laughs> Um, and um, I used your meter and that. Now I'm on ACC. Um, I had an injury many years ago. It was a work injury. I've had four spinal operations. Um, I get an accommodation supplement, but I do not qualify for anything else from WINS. So any medical things I have to pay for myself. Um, 
going by what you guys are proposing, or whoever the proposers are, um, my rent, putting in the accommodation supplement, which has shocked me that that would even be included, because almost that's like a form of double dipping into social welfare. That seems a little uh, mm, dodgy to me. Um, but my rent would go up $79 a week. Um, yes, I get more than someone on a benefit. I get 80% of my income, okay? But I don't get any access to any medical care if ACC's not paying for it. Um, oh, I have to embarrass myself now. I sometimes have a con uh, incontinence problem. I have to pay for certain things to ensure I'm not embarrassed by it, you know? Um, it involves a lot of costs. I live in a flat that is totally um, uninsulated. Now I know the walls are wet because we've seen photos. They did a, a job back in 2011, I think it was, where they had to remove walls in my flat because it was so infested with mould um, and dampness. And on this side of my flat where they cut out the wall to have a look at that, all the bricks were wet up to there. I've got photographs of it. Um, they, they tried to say it was the colouring of the bricks, but the gentleman that um, carried out the inspection, who was independent, um, said, no, that's water. That was never fixed. It was just put back. Um, so part of my cost, and bearing in mind, I can't go to work and income and get power or anything help from them. Part of my cost is keeping that freezing cold place warm in winter. If you take, if you go ahead and do what you do, well it sounds like I might have a lot more than others if we look at a benefit, which, you know, it's harsh. I've lived on a benefit for 10 years because ACC wouldn't initially accept my claim. So I know what it's like. But, uh, if you go ahead and do it the way you're proposing, you say it might help other people, I don't think it's going to, not the way it's built, um, but it's going to take me from just getting by, and we all know food's going up, everyone knows it, anyone goes shopping during the lockdown, um, the prices haven't come down. Um, we're still struggling with that and nobody's paying attention to things simple stuff like that nobody's even looking at that as part of the rent and um it's just i um when i saw i uh, must admit i rang someone um and i said what's the point of living it's like an assault after an assault um financially um i've had People, um, I'm just appalled that even that 80 year old cat, people are thinking of removing that. I just think that's disgusting. Um, I've had um, people of that age come to me, they're scared. Boy, are they scared. You know, um, they're not going to go to the council because they don't believe the council's going to help them. They really don't. I think that's sad. You know, we don't, um, we rarely see any council people, I don't mean city councillors obviously not coming knocking on our door, but um, we don't see any houses, city housing staff um, getting, coming to get to know us or anything. Um, I think the only time they're going to turn up is if someone's behind in their rent or something like that. So, um... You will put me um, into the same position you say you're trying to take care of by, um, I think it's Marxist what's happening. I think it's a redistribution of wealth. Um, that's my personal view. Just and, coming up to a minute. Yeah, so if you, want, if you want to um, have anyone ask you questions, this is sort of the time, but it's up to you. Yeah. One minute. So, yeah, well, I just hope you think of all the costs. I know, I believe city housing should run at a profit. I've always thought that, and I have never once, and I doubt if they could find anything on file where I've actually complained about a rent rise. When I came in, I'll finish with this actually, when I came in in 2006, my rent was $160 a week. It is now $276 a week, and if you go ahead with what um, you're planning, proposing to do, it will be $355 a week. I can't sustain that.
I just can't. Any questions? Um, we've actually run out of time for questions, but if there was any, then I made some time. Um, okay, no, it looks like you've been very clear. Thank you, Will. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in. Just to say, um, so a lot of the stuff's disappeared off the um, website too. Um, the um, Let's Talk website, off the front page of it. Luckily we got a recording of it. So been some but it seems to have disappeared. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think Artai Lim is still not quite here yet. I understand that she's still on the way. Um, Right, so I'd like to welcome um, Stephen Cotterall, if you'd like to come and um, talk with us. So you, Stephen, you've got five minutes, and I'll just point out that the timer is um, up there, it's the red, red bit, so um, would you like a... Questions? Would you like to... Um, Ask you people questions? Um, we can't, we don't interact, this is a submission, so you tell us <laughs> about your perspective of it. This and um, that was That was Will's. Has he got the virus? Yeah, so um, who uh, funded the council flats in the first place? Uh, Stephen, as I said, this is the, this is for you to share with us your perspective, and we we're not and nothing. If you people can't talk, you're getting paid on that, and you can't even talk. Don't be ridiculous. Now I'm grateful for my flat, you know that's good, and it has been done up the Katuku flats. But you people got to talk too. You're not morons, are you? Are um, you? Stephen, we have a process here, in in the um. So you can't talk. We can we can ask you questions, and we can we can well, ask questions. Then. Which flat? Sorry, the flats. Stephen. Which which flat? Where are they? Katuku in Kemp Street. And how old are they? How old? Don't know. Oh, Councillor um, Rush, I'll just get you to make sure you're following the um, process. So, um, so Stephen, if, if there's They've anything... They've recently been, been um, renovated, and um, they're not too bad, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things that are not very sensible in the way it's been done, but it is New Zealand, so, you know, they put double glazing in the north, so that's something. And um, there's, um, you know, new shower, new... Um, stove and so forth but look the you've got to realize that this gentleman is talking about where's he meant to get the money from are there jobs out there where's he going to get the money what are you trying to you're going to try to put the rents up on people who already haven't got money are you all friends of john key i beg your pardon um, no, we're not going to get into answering questions because this is about the this is about the rent raise, and it's really important that you share your perspective and with Jacinda. us. So, what do you want to know? Okay. Or is it just bullshit? You know, is it an actual um, submission for you to think about, or is it just bullshit? Tell me, Stephen. I'd just like to remind you that I'm we wish we sit years old. I remember with respect. Rob Muldoon. I remember Roger Douglas. So, you know, how old are you? That's not relevant in this conversation. So, oh, Stephen, what do you know Stephen, about um, what's happened to this country? This country's a bloody disgrace. I think, and I think Stephen... Inequality, maybe, maybe, right? You, you are you going to gonna improve the situation with regard to people who haven't got things, or are you going to make it worse? What are you going to do, bud? Yeah. Um, Councillor Rush, I don't, we're not going to engage with this conversation, Stephen. It's actually really important that you you, you submit. You're going to make it better rate. for people or worse? You're going to make it better for the people Councillor who Rush, haven't I got ask money. You not to engage now, um, Stephen. I think, Stephen, I think we might actually just stop now. I think we've got we've got the point that you're not happy with the so. raises, and we appreciate you coming in to tell us. Well, thank thank you. you. All right. Thank you, people. Um, is Mustafa here? No. Um, and we've got. I've just. I'll just say the people who are here because I'm not sure who is or who isn't. We've got Moshti, Wafa, not here yet. She's what's right through Zoom. Is she? Not yet. Okay. And then Nori is also. 
we might just have to have a few minutes break. If we just sit here, um, you can just have a, a wee breather and then um, we'll get going once we've got our next person ready to um, share. Thank you um, to the people who are sitting in our public submitters. Thank you for... <laughs>
to get back underway, so I've just been informed that we've got Atai Lim is here, um, and then we've got one other um, person coming in, Mustafa, um, and then the other two apparently aren't coming in today, so hopefully they can come um, next time we have the hearings. Um, but welcome, um, Atai Lim. Um, I think uh, Councillor Pennant is the um, Councillor Pennant is the microphone still on down there. Great, thank you. So, um, Achai Lim, we have five minutes, and you can see there's a clock up there, which we'll have to reset it. Um, it counts down, so you've got five minutes. Yeah. And I'll give you a warning with one minute left. English no good? Oh. Okay, well, just take your time. Okay, so five because, minutes, yeah. five minutes. Yeah, that's a simple one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So would you, you talk talk to us yeah. and tell us your thoughts, your um your submission. So what do you want to say? <laughs> how, how do <laughs> uh. Should we should we ask a question? Does someone want to try and ask a question? <laughs> Councillor Pennett. I looked at Councillor Fitzsimons and said Councillor Pennant. <laughs> Fitzsimons, this is very confusing. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Hello. Hi. Thank, Hi. <laughs> thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, where do you live? Uh, ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, where are you from originally? Where did you have you? Were you come from New Zealand or another country? I from Malaysia. Ah, oh, lovely. Ah, oh, lovely. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for coming to the council. Are there any other questions? Councillor Pennant. Thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. um, are you ha are you happy? Um, do you want to pay more or less for your rent? Is it is it okay? Yeah, Which yeah, is probably yeah, a redundant yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> Everyone yeah, wants to pay less. Yeah. But are you, your rent, yeah. if it goes up, is that difficult? Is that hard? But so many are affected, and I mean, no job. I just retire. That's why the pay is go up. Uh, yeah, but not so many. Uh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want it to go up so much? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Deputy Mayor Frey, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your flat and how it is for you living in that flat. My next flat? Yeah, but you're living in your home. What is your home like? You live in one of our council houses? Yeah, yeah, I'm not nice. Thank you, yeah. Mm. Are there any problems with it? No, no, no. Okay, that's I come 30 years old, 30 years old more, I will learn, 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 move, I will fit up already. Mm. One two year, I don't move another one. One more year, I move another one. That's why now I can stay a long time. So I'm you've, happy, yeah. you've stayed a long time in yeah, it yeah, and yeah. you want to stay a long yeah, time more. Yeah. And how affordable is it for you? <laughs> how, how, how easy is it for you to manage with the money and the rent? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Atai Lim. Yeah. Thank you for okay. your presentation. Oh, Thank you. All Thank finished. You. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We're just checking because we were understanding that Mustafa was still coming in, but um, that was about 15 minutes ago, so we're just confirming. We don't want them to arrive two minutes after we've just stopped. So nice having the sun come in after a week of no sun. Very nice. We can probably watch him walk up the road. It's on his way, so we will just wait. Uh, 
Uh, so we're just going to adjourn for about five minutes. Uh, Mustafa is walking up the road as we speak, so we will make sure we
Um, councillors, I just want to let you know that um, sometimes for our tenants, they aren't necessarily sure what this is going to look like. So what we think we'll do is maybe if we ask Mr for some questions and he's happy to answer some questions about his house and his rent. So maybe some questions like we did before, Councillor Fitzsimons, you could start. Hello, thanks for coming and seeing us. Um, can you just tell us a bit about where you live and uh, kind of how you find living there? Sorry, my name is Mustafa Omar. I live Kiara. I live in uh, Long Rex. I would. Let's see. Yes. Flat eight nine five five nine. Adelaide Road. Yeah. Perambur. Wellington. <laughs> Six, six, uh, six and six thousand to three New New Zealand. Yes. Okay. And do you like it there? Mm, not too much. I mean, because the rent is higher from me. Mm. One week, two hundred thirty. Mm. One week. I have two room. Yes, because my daughter, she leave me. Now in Australian, because mm. she study there, you want to study there, and then they COVID nineteen is coming, mm. she <laughs> charged there. <laughs> okay, she was helped me at that time, mm -hmm. but when she leave me, I can't because I am delivery in New Zealand nine years. Yes. And, and where have you come from? From. From Palestine. Ah. Yes. Yes. I have been here maybe 14 years. Yes. Thank you. We have a question from Deputy Mayor Frey. <laughs> Hello, kia ora. Kia. Um, what was it that made you decide to come and speak to us today? Did you want us to hear something um, from your point of view? <laughs> about am, your flat or no I am not sure sh someone from yeah. here I f they call me yeah. and then they give me the time for, okay. Okay. for to discuss yeah. about I thought about the room because I yeah. transfer room I decision I apply also to on last year on August maybe, 29th of August, I apply mm. one room. Oh, you want when one she room? she leave me, yes, okay. at that time. Right now, didn't find me. Yes, um, I, I, <laughs> I should, want to change, yeah. Like. I should have said you're very, very welcome to come and speak to us, but I was just trying to get to some of the Bring reasons up. that you want to... Mm. To speak slowly. The reason is reason. the yeah. reason expensive. That's what the reason. Two hundred and thirty. <laughs> I am delivery. You know. We have a question from Terry O'Neill. Yes, Terry. Hi there. Thank Hi. you for coming. Good. Um, I was wondering, could you tell um, my colleagues how warm your flat is, or if it is insulated well, like. Um, is your flat warm enough for over the winter time? It does it stay nice and dry? Is that is your mm. flat? Okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Thank you. Is it true? It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I own a pennant. Question. Yes, Thank you for coming in. Um, so. If you if your rent stays the same at two hundred and dollars and thirty, yes, does that mean there's some other things that you can't buy, like um, food or power? Yes, yes, not enough. Also, food, you know, especially is the time. I need food. I need to live. You know, that's why. Yeah. Um, Mia Foster. Yes. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, so, if you were going from a two a two room two bedroom 
Is so you, you two bedroom at the moment? Yeah. At the moment two. Two room. bedroom. Yeah. I need one room. So if you went to one, what what difference does that make in terms of your rent? Do you know? I don't know who from us here. Yeah. She told me one hundred and fifty by week. I don't know it somewhere at Kelberni. Yeah. Somewhere I don't know. Okay. She, she didn't tell me. Yeah. She but one, called one, me. One fifty. Yeah. Yeah, 150. Yeah. When, uh, yeah. Exactly 147. Hmm. 50. Yeah. And you said you are doing deliveries? Yes, deliveries. Yes. What, uh, d uh, for who? Or okay. uh, hmm? PMB distribution. Distribution. Ah, right, okay. PMB yeah. distribution yeah. from Auckland office. Yeah. The office hmm. from Auckland. But my, but my, uh, my boss they live here. My boss. Yeah. Oh. Okay. At uh, Miramar, maybe. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you Mustafa, uh, you for thank, thank you, Mustafa, for coming in. Thank you, Mustafa, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's a staff member that's willing to just have a quick chat with Mustafa, because I think um, Mustafa thought he was coming in to find out about whether he was going into the one-bedroom place. There's been a bit of confusion. And, um, so can you, can us help? Uh, can, <laughs> they, uh, they help me. So I think... Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Namaste by Indian. <laughs> Thank you. I am Palestinian. Bye bye. Thank you. So, councillors and Mayor, I think I'll just explain. Councillor Fitzsimons and I were talking because there were two submissions there where clearly the people coming in weren't quite sure what the process was. And what they've done is they've filled in the form and then it says, do you want to come and talk? And of course they've gone, yes, but don't actually know what that means. So for the next lot of submissions, I think we need to have a bit of a chat about the process to make sure that we've got good support, because clearly we needed an interpreter um, for um, our Chai Lim, and that would have been very helpful. So just to let you know that we'll follow that up. Um, but thank you so much for your questions and for, for supporting um, people to participate, because it is really important, and um, we need to do everything we can to make that easier and a better process. So I appreciate that. So Jill, will you make sure that people are coming to the right thing that they, they actually want That's to talk right. about? That's right. So I think about, we, need, we need to have a look at the process that we make sure we do a proper check-in, because obviously the form isn't leading to um, people understanding understanding what it looks like coming into here to do that. If you're thinking you're coming in to talk to a couple of people and you end up in this room, <laughs> pretty terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I have asked for a, a one or two issues to be followed up. I'm sure others have been as well. So officers yes. will get back to us just with some of the like water coming off walls is not acceptable, obviously. Yeah, I've already been talking to Angela. They're taking notes and going to give us a response. Yes, yeah. thank you. So thank you so much, councillors, for your um, for you know for the way you've participated today, and I'd also like to acknowledge the participants who are still here. Thank you for coming in today and for talking to us. It's really important that we do hear from the community about um, this very important decision. Um, so yes, what we'll do now is we'll go on to. Um, the general business, which it's a bit strange because it asked Councillor Fitzsimons to introduce the report, which you can do probably very quickly, I imagine. Yeah, I'd just like to thank the submitters for coming in today. Uh, this is only the beginning of the hearings on this. We'll have some more. Uh, and uh, if any of you have people in your wards contacting you about this, there is still a bit more time till the 30th to get submissions in. And um, City Housing is uh, very attentive in terms of making sure that people understand what would be the implications for them. So don't hesitate to um, to part to hand uh, any any people that come to you to get their information handed on to City Housing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do we have a seconder for this um, paper? Oh, Councillor Conde, thank you. Um, so. I imagine that there is no further debate on this because it's um, really receiving the, the submissions. Uh, so I now put this to the vote, and if you could vote accordingly. Yep, so they've voted. And that is carried unanimously. Right, koa mutu tēnei hui. We've finished this meeting now, so for you would like to e tū mō te karakia. It goes across two pages. That makes it a bit more complicated. It is around the tables, so you see it's on both sides. Um, unu hia, unu hia, unu hia ki te uru tapu nui. Kia wā, te mama, te ngāko, te tīnana, 
Kristova i te ara koe a rā e rongo whakai ki a wātū 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 ki a Thank you.